Hi, I'm Jeanette Yoff, and I'm a psychotherapist working with children in foster care and adoption. And I'm here to help you understand some ways of supporting your child, whether you're a parent by adoption, a parent by foster care. I hope that this presentation will give you a lot of new information and information to support you and your family. And so today we're gonna to talk about helping adopted children with grief. And I myself, I would like to disclose in the beginning of this training is I am also an adoptee and I was raised in foster care. So this uh, experience and this training is near and dear to my heart. So I hope that you find this helpful. So what are the losses associated with adoption? For the adoptee, the biggest and greatest loss is the loss of their family of origin. That biological, genetic, and cultural history, ethnic or racial, that they don't have either knowledge of or awareness of or understanding of their roots in knowing who they are, that sense of belonging. There's a lot of words called tribe. That sense of knowing where you come from gives you a sense of tribe and pride. And then there's the sense of security. Why is this a loss? Because in the beginning of a child's life, that security of being born and remaining with their birth mother, that connection has been severed, which does create a blueprint for the rest of the child's life and feeling a sense of, am I secure? Can I trust this relationship? And can I trust that you're not going to do the same to me? So the sense of security is a loss. Identity is a loss. Am I real? Where do I come from? Who am I? Is that existential question we all have. However, for the adoptee, it's on a greater, more profound level. Minimal history impacts an adoptee's sense of self-worth. Why am I not with my birth family? Is it because of me? Is it something I have done? And children are egotistic, so they are going to blame themselves unless told otherwise, unless they're told the reasons why they could not remain with their family of origin. And another loss is having that borrowed or implied sense of self, which comes from the world around you. I myself was raised in a Jewish family, did not know that I was Argentinian, Irish, and Roman Catholic. And my family, my family through adoption, became my new identity because I didn't know my identity. So it became this borrowed or implied identity that was imposed onto me until I learned later where I came from, what my cultural ethnic history was, and I could identify, reclaim, and have what's called reculturation and have a good, greater sense of self. And the last loss is not being part of the decision. And what is that decision? To be adopted. You know, infants are infants. They are powerless. They don't have a say. They don't have a choice in the matter. This is a choice and a decision that was made for them. So this is another loss of not being able and saying, I want this or I don't want this. What is grief? Grief is an emotional response or reaction to loss, particularly the loss of someone or something to which we formed a bond of attachment. What people find difficult to understand is that babies do form attachments to their mothers in the womb. And I think this is hard because we don't want to think about it and it has not been acknowledged. And how could a baby remember this attachment? Well, the body remembers. And the more we're understanding about attachment, trauma, how trauma gets stored in the body, and then understanding and reflecting and accepting that separating a baby from the mother at birth is considered a traumatic event. And over time, a child can carry that trauma in their bodies. So this loss, the grief, is the forming of this attachment to the birth mother. And grief is allowing oneself to process their loss through mourning. 
So mourning means taking that internal experience of grief and expressing it externally. Adopted children need to be encouraged to mourn their loss. These children often have difficulty dealing with their grief due to shame, embarrassment, and fear of being misunderstood. Grief and adoption is a repeated necessity during each stage of development. As their understanding of adoption grows, thus the grieving child can feel like there is no end to their losses. An adopted child, regardless of how wonderful they were raised, is still grieving the loss of their family of origin and questions this loss over time in time in order to make sense of what happened to them. Common symptoms of grief. There's somatic issues. So feelings that get stored, repressed, suppressed into the body. I was a kid that had terrible stomach aches. I just pushed down all the feelings and the stress would go into my body and I would, and it would show up psychosomatically as stomach aches. Uh, some kids have aches and pains. Some kids are falling into things. Another common symptom is not being given permission to grieve, which causes this repression. When the child does begin to have feelings, it's repressed, it's pushed down. And what can happen is that can cause even more anxiety. If the child is not given permission and the opportunity to grieve, they're going to think it's wrong because the people around them are not showing them how it's necessary to grieve because you have experienced a profound loss. Depression is a symptom, of course, that's grief acting out. When we push in, one of my phrases, what gets repressed must be expressed. So the child may act it out, the oppression of all these big feelings of grief, and they may show a lack of fitting in or a sense of belonging. And so these are common symptoms of grief. How to support your child's grief. Find the losses and honor them. Find the unmet grief and join them. Find the lack of coping skills or support and provide them. Be an owl. That is observe, watch, and listen to your child. Children are always sending signals that they're grieving. And so I'm gonna go through the seven nonverbal cues for you to be aware of so you can step back, be an owl, observe, watch, and listen to their seven nonverbal cues because healing cannot happen without safety in relationship. One, eye contact. The way your child is looking at you, are they looking at you and they're seemingly nervous in their eyes, they're holding back, they're tearful, their tone of voice. Are they yelling? Are they shaking as they're talking? Are they their posture? How are they holding their bodies? Are they closed? 90% of communication is nonverbal. Hand gestures. Are they fast in their movement? Are they <sighs> laxadaisy in their movement? Are they fatigued in their movement? Are they clenched? Are they holding the tension in their hands? The timing, how fast or slow are they moving? Are they lethargic and everything's a chore and it takes so much energy? That could be a root cause of their depression and a symptom. And seven, the intensity of how they respond. Are they, it takes them a while to respond. It takes them a while to filter information. So reading the seven nonverbal cues is very important. And as a parent, you are also aware of your seven nonverbal cues. A child is always looking at, how are you looking at them? How are you holding your face? How are you expressing yourself? Are you staying open and curious or intense and interrogating? So be aware of how you're communicating your nonverbal communication. Are you uncomfortable? Is your tone of voice tense and scared? Is your posture tense 
tight and closed off when you're asking your child to open up and be vulnerable when you're not vulnerable. Rhythm is so important, joining in your child's rhythm and matching and doing what's called the dance of attachment. And the intensity, how fast or slow are you responding when they do call to you? Are you slow to respond? Are you fast to respond? Are you just right to respond? If you see your child differently, you will see a different child. So Dr. Stuart Shanker, famous quote, and I love this quote because we need to reframe the way we see grief, especially for children. So reframing your owl these kids are going to act out. They're going to be emotional. They're going to cry. They're going to suppress. They're going to push it down because they're kids. It's overwhelming to feel grief, even as adults. So it's not that they won't behave. Or what I hear a lot from parents is, when will they get over it? They will not get over it. They will always learn how to move through it. And they can't do it alone. So let's reframe that. They can't behave like other kids their age because they have experienced a profound loss and they are grieving. Again, reframe your owl. If you see a child differently, you'll see a different child. It's not what's wrong with you. Oh boy, they're crying again. It's, let me reframe this. Wow, a loss that happened to you makes you so sad that you now have to protect, avoid, and control the world around you because the feeling of grief is feeling helpless, hopeless, and powerless of the experience. And grief is that feeling. It's very profound. There's no rhyme or reason. You can't put it in a box. You can't put it on the shelf. It's there. It shows up at the darndest of times. And it feels out of control. I was a kid who cried a lot. And I always say I cried buckets. And my mother, by adoption, did not know how to handle my grief because I triggered her grief and she hadn't done her own work with her own grief to be comfortable with my grief. And so when I cried, she would say to me, stop feeling sorry for yourself. And that taught me to stop feeling sorry for myself. And I pushed it. I kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it until I repressed it so deep that my depression turned into anxiety. And 60% of people who experience depression also experience anxiety and vice versa. So they do go hand in hand. Please understand it's okay for children to grieve. It's part of their healing process. They will move through this in time and over time, but they will need your time and attention.